Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode with Stephen Cornett. Today, I'm gonna to take you on an experience, an experience of collecting indigenous microorganisms. So you may have heard me talk about Korean natural farming in previous videos or podcasts, and what we're doing is collecting the most powerful, strong, persistent, um, advanced microbes that are possible to collect. Uh, we're collecting them on rice, and then we are stabilizing them in sugar, putting them to sleep effectively, so that whenever we want a microbial inoculant like this, we can pull that out and use it, or grow it out further for IMO 3, 4, 5. Uh, so, this video is not gonna be a tutorial about how to make IMO, or make an IMO box. I will do those videos in the future, but I'm gonna show you the two places that I collected the indigenous microorganisms, and then we'll come back here, take a look at them together, see how good they are, and they came out good and bad. And why did that happen? So we're gonna get into all that stuff on this episode. Um, so if you're new to Korean natural farming, hang on tight. This is a, a really deep and wide subject, but um, absolutely fascinating, interesting, and this is the best microbial inoculant that you can create. Uh, not create, really, collect and store yourself very cheaply using rice, brown sugar, and then the ecosystem. So we did a full four full days. Um, and when it was full summer here, we did three days and that worked really well too. So three days in full summer um, and four coming into like this in between fall and summer period. Woohoo! Nice. So we've got some great color here, great uh, microbial growth, nice puff on here, interesting uh, pink colors as well. So it looks from the top like a great collection, but we gotta get in there and see, is it moist and all slimy and nasty? If that's the case, it's no bueno, we gotta get rid of it. Let me get my scale going. I'm, gonna, I'm making IMO2 right now, which is mixing one-to-one -one this with brown sugar, and that's a way to store the microbes indefinitely. So as I get in here, now I noticed um, when I did make this that the rice was a little more wet than I liked it. So yeah, this section was a little bit more slimy than I would like. That's the gooey slimy, that's bad. Um, that means I think that was probably too wet, too much moisture in that area, so microbes exploded in there. And it's gonna have, it has a little bit of a alcoholy fermented smell. This collection's really good, so I'm just gonna pull those sections out. We just won't include that in here. And so, unfortunately what that means is, this wasn't a perfect collection. It was very good until we started to see that stuff. What I'm gonna do, I, I still feel like this is usable for me, because most of the rest of it is good. So at the end here, I'm gonna give you guys my best tips for how to avoid this problem and what kind of went wrong on my rice making. So what I'll do with the leftovers is just throw it in a compost pile. 675, so I'll do 675 sugar here, mix it up and then throw it in a jar. Okay guys, so another nice looking IMO collection on the top. Yeah, I wish I could <laughs> let you guys feel this. This is what, is what it should feel like right here. Okay, so that looks good. On the inside, it's all good. So, so far so good. Let's dig into another area. But yeah, that's looking so good. That's what we're talking about. This is a good collection. This is an A collection, I think. Yep, this all is a good collection, guys. Wonderful. We're getting this salmon colored microbial growth and then the white fuzzy stuff as well, which we always love to see. So these are two different boxes, two different box designs. One, you know, both could hold different amounts of rice and the airflow was different. Um, in both, but this collection's good. So this is actually a really cool example to show you guys, actually, because I cooked the rice the same way, right? But they were two different boxes, and that was that was the huge different variable, right? Very interesting. So also, my space here, my airspace was really good and tight. Um, what else was different? Maybe the amount of staples I put on here, so it, the microbes can make a really good uh, kind of environment and seal inside of there. So this was a great collection, and this is another reason to put out multiple boxes, because think about all the things we just learned. So 675, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do 700, because for some reason, my collections, they always stay active a little bit longer. 
I've noticed. And when it's active, like it'll start bubbling, it means the microbes are you know, digesting stuff, which you don't want that, you want them asleep. So you add a little bit more sugar to pull more water out and, and then it goes, they will go to sleep. And now all I'm gonna do is just massage all this into the rice. You want these rice kernels to kind of become more individualized. And as you're mixing it, you can already feel the water being pulled out and things get, get gooier. Just pick these up. I think this will this size will fit well. I'm trying to figure out, you know, like a standardized formula, like so many cups of rice that will fit perfectly in my box, which will fit um, at the end will fit perfectly in a jar. When you're making this, we're trying to have an airspace that is one third of the space taken up by whatever material. And that's kind of this golden ratio that you use in a lot of fermentation and especially in k &F, it's all uh, one third to two third basically. Which we're not gonna get there with this jar. Okay, so maybe I actually wanna use a smaller jar. The airspace thing is really so the microbes can kind of maintain their environment and it also allows, like there's a less chance for other microbes to get in there and be able to establish themselves. Something closer to that. So there's not a lot of airspace at the top. And also Chris Trump told us it could be like a one quarter to one third airspace. That's kind of like the range that you have there. So now I'm just going to label this information about it. Um, and I'm actually going to start recording all of this in my computer because there's so many variables like to get myself to become an expert at this, I'm going to really track this. Now because this was sort of a nastier collection, I took out, I believe, all that smushy nasty stuff. This could become an overactive IMO too, which I, I might need to add more sugar. It could even go bad. So I'll keep an eye on this thing, but you know, we're gonna do everything we can to ensure that it does, um, we give it the environment and everything that it can hopefully become a decent, you know, collection that I can use. I'm gonna clean off the outside and the, the, a little bit of the inner lip too. Okay, final step on this is just to throw a bre breathable lid on there and that's it. And we'll just keep an eye on it over the next uh, hour or two and see if it does become active, which means I'll see bubbles. Okay, this is way too active. See all the bubbles in there? Okay, so I'm gonna add a couple spoonfuls just of sugar and stir, stir that in. This one I'm also seeing activity. It doesn't look as bad, but I will also add sugar. So this thing was super active, so that's why I just added four more tablespoons, which is a lot, but this is way too active. Make sure it gets all down to the bottom. Now, I'm gonna use a different spoon here too. I'm not gonna use this spoon and put it into there. So Mr. Cho, and everybody's always taught that um, you always keep your collections separate for storage. Okay, that's it. And then we're just gonna keep an eye on it the next 30 minutes to an hour. You would not want it to stay active because those microbes are living and dying very quickly um, and uh, you'll just lose diversity and population size. This smaller jar, because it's a smaller volume and it looked less active, less bubbles, I only did two heaping tablespoons to this. How did we get a better collection in one box than the other, even though we use the same rice? So what ended up happening on my rice, I think I just had a little bit too much water in there this time. I did nine cups of rice for these two boxes. Chris Trump at his five day recommended fluffing the rice. I'm not sure if that was right when the rice is done cooking, fluff it and then let it sit on the warm setting for 15 or at the end. I'd fluff it again at the end too, probably before and after. Um, that might help it too if you did too moist to help some of that more of that moisture come out. So this box on the left is made of cedar. This is considered, you know, one of the superior materials because it will last for many, many, many seasons. It is very rot resistant. This is just a pine box. It's not going to last long. I made it from some scrap wood. This was sent uh, by a friend of mine. Thank you so much for sending this over to me. It's got the slats on the bottom, holes drilled in the slats, and then um, some hole, a couple, like four holes going across only um, in, in the area where the rice will be. Chris Trump in his five day also recommended those holes because some airflow going through the rice is a really good thing. So with this box, I did holes higher. This is, I made this before I went to Chris Trump's class and he said it can cause it to get too dry on the top. So, um, but on this box I had that, we did, oops, and we got a better collection in this box. Not saying that was the reason, but on the bottom, you know, I was lazy. I didn't cut out slats. I just used my chop saw to go and, you know, make some cuts in this one board here. And then I drilled some holes. These are probably eight, eight, they're now quarter inch holes probably. 
I think that's what I did. The sides of these boxes are pretty darn similar, actually. This one's taller, and because the slats are like this, so there, there's a lot more vertical space. So that was the major difference in design right there. So I was able to fit a thicker stack of rice in that box. Now, what I'm thinking is, there's so many variables at play here, guys. You know, the two different locations, too. If we would have put two boxes at each location, that would have gave us a lot more information. So I really think that, that that is the main difference here is that that rice was just so much thicker in that box. And because the rice had a little bit too much moisture um, and there wasn't air holes up here where that rice was, those factors may have uh, been what pushed this box to go gross.